Look at Shay. Who the f is Shay looking at, right? Look who Shay looked at, right? Guess who we noticed checked into the game? Keon Ellis. I believe that's his name, right? Sacramento Kings rookie, right? And so understanding that he came into the game, right? First play into the game, what is he going to do with the first year player checking in for the first time guarding an all NBA first teamer, right? He's going to take advantage of the fact of that. you inexperienced. I'm getting myself to the line. And it don't just stop there, right? It don't just stop there. Understand this too. It's not going to stop there. He gets the ball right here in the backcourt. He's seeing barbecue chicken. He's done. He's attacking this every single time because this is a matchup as to which he knows he's not ready for this, right? So boom. Now full court, full court pressure. Guess what? Don't matter. I'm still attacking. I'm still aggressive. Regardless of the fact that you got help right there, that one play alone, that don't save you, right? That shit don't save you. Boom, inbound right underneath, gets the catch, and understand. His head is up. His eyes are up. He already got the angle on Ellis. Looking at Trey Lyles, shoulder in the perfect spot. Boom, bump, step back, fade, shot along that baseline, bucket, right? And understand, this shit is still not done. It's still not done. Right? This is someone who's playing smart. He's playing the game smart, bro. Understand. Boom. Picks up on him again in transition. Pick up point about 40 feet out. That's where he messed up. Because now he gets to work him down. And since he's going backwards, hits him with a bump, the momentum carries him further down. And right here, this lay is tougher than he even looks right here from this next angle that you're about to see. Right? Notice this, right? Boom. You seen that spin? Eyes is up. SGA be having the funniest faces sometimes, bro. <laughs> He'd be having the funniest faces, but you'd be hooping though. But notice this, right? Notice how he's able to protect the ball, right? Ball on the right side. Ellis reach, boom, puts it on this right side to protect it from that reach. Help defenders on the same side he's protecting the ball from because that reach brings it over to that left side. And now to avoid the defense and actually get the lay through the bump on the contact, extends that shit to the right side, boom, gets that lay. That's just tough. This is where basketball got fucked up the most, playing in transition. A lot of people will get here and immediately think to take a three, but understanding I got Trey Lyles, we playing in transition, I have a full head of steam, he catches this and goes straight downhill and gets to his bucket, and now with that left, that's even tougher. I don't even think y'all understand how tough that is until you see this angle, right? Really look at this angle, right? This is with the left, by the way, right? With the left. Come on, man. Come on, man. that's tough. You know what I'm saying? You see him use that left hand. Like I said, he could be a more complete Jalen Brown. I'm telling you, man, just give him some time. Just give him some time. This shit crazy tough, right? This shit is stupid tough. Look, boom, bump, contact, right? Over, rip through at that. A lot of y'all will fold on the contact alone, but mix the contact with the pickup, he still is able to get here. Now notice, left step, right step. Look at his entire frame, right? Right foot pointed to the corner. Chest pointed to the corner. Only thing that's turned again and looking at the rim is his eyes. So now by the time he wants to get a shot up, he has to turn his entire body in the air while he gets a heavily contested, damn near smothered shot contest, right? Boom, gets up, still gets that bucket. That's just tough. Jay does playing with the second unit, right? Herder hits the shot. And so at this point in time, you got to understand, right? And Jay does perspective. If he wants to be able to score with the second unit as the lead guard, he needs to be able to find opportunities when the defense is not set. So you're just seeing Kevin Herter getting back, even though it's off a of make, right? Mitchell now playing full court. This is going to be the best time for him to get to his spots because now he's already got Herter on the retreat, going backwards as a defender. And now he's already way uncomfortable in this situ situation. So now, boom, gets to stop, change direction. Under low rip through, boom, hot fade, gets the bounce. Another tough bucket, bro. J Dub tough. Notice this, right? You got SJ about to come up and set a back screen on whatever side, right? But notice the timing of switch J Dub goes. You notice that, right? Pete Fox, right? Really Pete Fox. And how since J Dub was able to break the timing of his go in his attack move, he's able to catch De'Aaron Fox on the retreat because he's now hopped up. And now since he already sees J-Dub with a full head of steam, what he's now going to do is now play defense on the retreat, like I said. And now, boom, he's just able to get there, use his size, and find his angle and get that lay off the glass. Look at Shea's body angle, right? Because at this point in time, I did that shit again. That's crazy, right? At this point in time, what Shea is able to do is 
keep his body angled to the corner. So now Sabonis thinks he's going to get into a handoff. But at the same time, right, he's now positioned himself to get skinny and get to the rim and avoid contact on Sabonis, who's a bigger player. So now he can stretch out and get this quick lay before he can even contest that shot. He got Keegan Murray on him, right? And at this point, he's just scanning the floor, seeing what's going on, right? And so he's forced to go from relaxed to quick because Trey Lyles now is sending this double to his left side. This is how he's able to evade double teams, right? So he just goes the opposite direction. Double team occurs. Understand that happened a few feet outside that three-point line, right? Maybe 30, 35 feet out, right? And so now when he's going up this time, reading the play call, understanding what do we need to run as a team? But at the same time, though, right, at the same time, double team comes. Now everything gets thrown out the window. We're not running no play. We're not trying to confine ourselves to doing one thing. We must take advantage of what is here, right? And so instead of doing what a lot of y'all guards would do, what a lot of y'all guards do is that when y'all see this double team, y'all begin just to dribble as fast as you can, get up the floor, just try to run away from them, right? But look at what SGA does, right? Look. He just stays in the same spot so he can maintain space. And by spa having space, he buys time. With time, he can now read the floor and see where to throw the ball. But if you close up that space, you have less time. And now you're going to panic when you make your decision, right? So now he's able to see Josh Giddy throws that skip. And now they're just playing basketball while the defense is out of rotation. Boom, Lou door on his wing. Shot goes up. They end up hitting that shot. When you see a move like this, y'all always think it's that ball and the snatch that's able to get me to deceive the defender. But what it really is, though, is that y'all forget this one part of these moves that allow y'all to sell this move, which is this off arm. Because look at Shea's left hand, right? Look at his left arm. He, sw he swings that left arm up. And what that does, it brings trunk rotation and shoulder preparation as if you're actually going to drive. So when a defender sees you do that shit so quick, they really think you're going to go that way because it's like you're sprinting, right? Boom, you're bringing that other arm with you while that ball is in the other hand. And so now they'll end up doing what? Jumping out to that side that you sold, and now you're able to get space that other way. When it comes down to playing in isolations, y'all got to get out of your own head and get your head into the game and actually make reads, right? Notice the bonus with J-Dub, right? Sabonis is already moving backwards, right? So when J-Dub decides to do this, get into a step back and have a hard plant step on that first one, he's creating even more space because Sabonis is already on the retreat. Now we get the shot clean over the top, is able to get his bucket on the fact that he was just looking and making the read. Going right back to this matchup with Sabonis, right? He got Ellis on him. And now notice this hezzy that J-Dub's about to do off the screen, right? Notice, right there. What Sabonis now does with this right foot is that he gets himself to a stop thinking that J-Dub is going to stop and he doesn't know, he no longer needs to plug, right? So now what J-Dub really does is use that step to then get himself more momentum to get downhill. So while Sabonis got to a stop, he built himself a little more momentum to get to attack the rim and now he has that angle to be able to finish all off that hezzy. I just want y'all to look at look at SGA and Davion Mitchell. Right, just look at the drive and the angles that he got. Normally, when you got a defender this far behind you, you'll just already want to go and attack the rim. But what does SGA do? He gets into a step back. Why? Because it's bigger than you and your defender because there's four other defenders on the floor. SGA has his eyes up, right? He beat Mitchell, but his eyes are up and seeing Fox step all the way up and help. So what SGA does now, step and take that right step into space to force Davion Mitchell to navigate around that and then he gets back into space so now he has room for that shot Shea got the rock double team is coming but understand where he's going to go right let's track his where he's going from the middle to his left side to his left side to his left elbow now brings it to the left wing that double team came from his right side and he only went left when a double team came by, he only went to space and went away from the double team. So he has more time to be able to make reads like what he's going to do right here. Kick it to Chet. Chet, Jalen Williams with the cut, not settling for the three. Now he gets that two. Notice SGA, right? You got 10 on the shot clock. Ellis by himself. Understand, he's reading the floor at this point in time. He ain't just sitting here dribbling, doing nothing, right? Fox comes over for the double team. On his left side, where does he go? To his right, right? And now working his way right, guess what he does now? 
low rip through they're going to reach because they're desperate at this point in time of the game so all these moves are extremely antsy and last ditch so boom foul now he gets his two headed to the line and that's 38 for sga and 32 for j-dub so 